Hi guys, welcome to another video by Simply Learn. Today we are going to see the different types of cloud computing service models. So let's get started. What's in it for you? First, we are going to see what is cloud computing, then the different types of service models, and then we are going to see the key features, pros and cons of each. Then we are going to see the top companies providing these service models and finally the end users of these service models. What is cloud computing? Before we go into cloud computing, what does the term cloud mean? Cloud refers to a network or internet. It provides services over public and private networks. So many applications execute on the cloud and also it is present at a very remote location. So the users can access these files and applications that is present on the cloud from any device unless and until it has strong internet connectivity. Now let's look at few of the cloud computing benefits. The first is cloud computing reduces cost. So it is a pay as you go pricing and you pay for what service you use. Next, cloud backs up and restores huge amounts of data. So let's take an example. We knew that iPhone uses iCloud for backup. If in case the phone crashes, all the backed up data can be restored. Cloud computing is highly reliable and this is one of the biggest advantages. You can always get instant updates about the changes. Cloud-based applications automatically refresh and update themselves. This saves valuable IT staff time and money spent on updating and refreshing the applications. Like I've said before, cloud computing has unlimited storage capacity. At any time, you can expand your storage capacity with very nominal monthly fees. Now that we know what cloud computing is, let's look at the types of cloud computing service models. For a better understanding, let's consider a scenario. Consider baking lasagna. You have four options. You can either bake it at home or you can go to a restaurant to eat lasagna or walk into an event and bake or get it delivered to your doorstep. But how is this related to cloud computing? Well, let's take a look. We have four boxes. We have the traditional method, we have the infrastructure as a service, we have platform as a service and we have software as a service. In the traditional method, everything is made at home and all the components are managed by us that is kitchen, electricity, microwave, lasagna sheets, then toppings, meat and cooking the lasagna. But when it comes to infrastructure as a service, the main kitchen appliances are managed by the vendor and the other things are managed by us. So basically the infrastructure is managed by the vendor. When we look at platform as a service, the infrastructure and the main ingredient for the software is managed by the vendor and the other things are managed by us. But when we look at software as a service, everything from the infrastructure till the end product is managed by the vendor. Now let's get into brief of all this. When we look at the traditional method, Everything is done from the scratch, from choosing the right ingredients to the mode of preparation. And we have the full control of the toppings. This is similar to traditional method where all the hardware and software components are built by our choice of requirements. When we look at infrastructure as a service, we can say kitchen, electricity and microwave is the infrastructure and this is where the code runs. The next step is to alter the software as per our requirements. When you look at platform as a service, uh, it's similar to going to an event and baking. So you have the main ingredient that is the lasagna sheet and then you have all the appliances that is kitchen, electricity and microwave. And the rest is managed by us. You can either put toppings or you don't want to put meat or you want it to be wedged. It's all up to us. So the components are altered as per our requirements. Finally, in software as a service, the entire thing is modeled by the vendor. So this is where you just give in your requirements and you get the software delivered to you. It's basically where the deployment and framework of the project is already set. Now that we have a brief of all these services, let's dive deep into each one of them. First, we have infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure cloud provider gives a variety of infrastructures such as storage, services, network hardware and so on. It also maintains and supports these infrastructures. Customers can access these resources over the internet. Next, let's look at the benefits of infrastructure as a service. So the first feature is that these resources can easily be scaled up and down. Next, the cost depends on the consumption. So basically it's a pay as you go pricing and you pay for what you use. You pay for the services you use. A single piece of server can give out a lot of information to many users. And finally, the client has complete control over the architecture. 
Now, let's look at the pros of infrastructure as a service model. Firstly, it is highly flexible. This is because only the infrastructure is provided and the rest depends on the customer requirements. Next, like I said before, it is cost effective and you pay for what you use. It is easy to use as all the updates are deployed and all the hardware is deployed automatically. Management tasks are virtualized so that the other employees have time for other tasks. Now, let's look at few of its cons. It is a multi-tenant architecture. Due to this, there is an issue with data security. When a new infrastructure is introduced, team training is required to learn all about this new infrastructure and it consumes a lot of time. If in case the server crashes at the vendor side, the customers cannot access the data for a while and they would have to wait for a quite a lot of time until the vendor fixes this issue. Now that we know what infrastructure as a service is, let's look at platform as a service. Platform as a service cloud computing platform is a developer programming platform which is used for the programmers to develop, test and run and manage the applications. A developer writes the applications and deploys it directly into this layer. All the infrastructure to run the applications will be over the internet. Let's look at the benefits now. Firstly, the resources can be scaled up and down based on the requirements of the user. Multiple users can access the same application. It allows for testing and hosting apps in the same environment. The web services and databases and servers are integrated into one. And finally, the teams can collaborate very easily. Next, let's look at the pros of PaaS. Firstly, the development process is quick and easy as it is a developer programming platform. It is cost efficient. You only pay for the services you use. When you use platform as a service, the coding is done by the developer before, so less coding is required. And then the migration to hybrid cloud is very easy. Next, let's look at few of the cons of platform as a service. Similar to IaaS, data security is an issue because it has a multi-tenant architecture. There's a compatibility issue with the existing infrastructure. PaaS is dependent on the vendor speed, reliability, and support. Now that we know about platform as a service, let's go ahead and dive deep into software as a service. In software as a service, everything is done by the vendors. The end users are only responsible to give their requirements and everything is done by the providers. Now let's go ahead and look at its benefits. The installations and updations are done by the providers. Resources are scaled up and down based on the requirements of the users. The only requirement is that there has to be a strong network connectivity. And finally, the provider is responsible for everything. Now, let's go ahead and look at the pros of SaaS. Upgrades are automatic, firstly. Then next, it is again a pay-as-you-go model. It is easier to customize in SaaS rather than the other service models. It is accessible from any location. The only constraint is that you need to have a strong internet connectivity. Let's see the cons of SaaS. The provider has entire control. The end users only have the control of giving the requirements. There are only few solutions for software crashes. The devices should always be connected for better performance. Now that we've seen all the three models, let's see a few of the companies providing these service models. The famous IAS providers are Amazon Web Services, Rackspace, DigitalOcean, Linode, and Microsoft Azure. These are only a few. There are many more apart from these. Amazon offers many features such as auto-scaling, cloud monitoring, and load balancing features. When it comes to Rackspace, the cloud computing platform vendor focuses primarily on enterprise-level hosting services. When you look at famous past providers, you have Heroku, Apache Stratos, OpenShift, Microsoft Azure, and many other providers. Going ahead, in SaaS providers, the most important one is Google Apps, then there's Salesforce, there's Cisco WebEx, there's Dropbox, and many more. Finally, let's look at the end users of the cloud computing service models. We can picture this as a pyramid. So in IaaS, the end users are system admins who are responsible for maintaining everything except the infrastructure. Then in PaaS, the end users are the developers who code on the platform provided by the vendors. In SaaS, the end users are the customers who give only the requirements and the software is built based on those requirements by the vendors. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.